Welcome to the Lost Signals Discusses Literature, where we apply the revolutionary mutt skill to classic and contemporary works of prose. So, join us once again, won't you? Hello there, my friends, and welcome back to Lost Signals Discusses and Reviews Literature. I am your lawnmower host, <laughs> Scott Thurlow, and I'm here with my uh, grass-tending friends, Stephen Amosi. Hello. Hope to never be a dad. <laughs> Jonathan Ian Manzer. Anita Trim. And Chris Morgan. Don't pee on me. Yes. And tonight's selection is a rather a very short story. In fact, it's about 500 words and change, entitled Lawn Dad by Lincoln Michelle. And it was originally published in Midnight Breakfast, which is an online publication I'm not very familiar with. Mm -hmm. But that is where we found it. And so before we get into it, I will say like this is also like from a random list or randomly chosen from a list that we have of like well-reviewed or well-received modern short fiction. And yeah, it's indeed very short. Emphasis on short. So... Before we launch in, uh, Chris, I believe you have a log line, as I alluded to. Lawnmower Dad. Yes, the Lawnmower Dad. The Lawnmower Dad. And uh, Stevo, why don't you tell us, tell us about the plot of Lawn Dad? Sure, sure. Uh, there's Dad, who's a drunk, gets kicked out of the house, stays on the lawn too long, becomes part of the lawn, <laughs> uh, tells his daughter to mow him. I thought or, gonna, like, keep him trimmed. Yeah, I thought you were going to go with, I'm drunk, I'm dad, I'm drunk. <laughs> I'm drunk, I'm dad. I'm the lawn. <laughs> But yeah, that's pretty much it. So like, it's kind of like a slice of surreality, like pretty much for the most part. So again, uh, this is sort of an interesting experiment, or perhaps will be, because it's so short. Oh. I think this might be one of the shortest pieces, if not the one that we've ever done on lit reviews. So it's kind of hard to like give it like a you know a score. So I'm, I'm gonna hold off on what I think. What do you guys think about score wise for plot for this? Well, this is a classic fable or folktale we've re we've reviewed the theory behind these so much that i, suppose I that's still true, yeah. don't recognize the definitions of them that's a good but point though well, is that it yeah it's surreal but it, it is surreal to make a point mm -hmm. and we'll discuss that in themes but it, it really ca it really captured that it had that style to it with some kind of magical realism involved fair, in yeah. a, a real situation and you're seeing the daughter's point of view throughout this entire thing and how her the an like not the antics but the repercussions of her father's alcoholism uh led her to in a way become like grow in life yeah you know, it, yeah she becomes a great lawn uh, care expert <laughs> but th th that's not the point of sure. it it's so I'm going to give it, I think, a two overall, uh, because it's not the best fleshed out world, but it's to the point of a fable or folktale. Yeah, it, this is this is interesting in terms of kind of how it goes about doing a plot, right? And mm. you do kind of get a semi arc out of it, and you do kind of get like this semi story out of it, even how short it is. I think, I think this might be the shortest one we ever did, or it's, it's very. It's got to be up there, yeah. Um, and it's really interesting to see how writers try to do the work of a longer story in this really condensed space. Mm. I think it's all. I think it's interesting a lot to see, like well done, um, really short stories, and I think that. This is a pretty well done, really short story. So I'm going to agree with you. It's a two. It's not, I can't by any means give it the score of a fully fleshed out plot, but um, I think it's it does pretty well with the limited amount of time that it has. Yeah, I'm going to go with the two as well. Um, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It takes about two minutes to read, maybe. <laughs> um, I think it would have been a really... Um, not a huge difficult world to uh flesh out you know i'm I'm not criticizing it i'm just saying like we're at five or ten pages i would definitely not go, have gone mm. over like 10 pages i'm just saying that that would give it a three but i enjoyed it quite a bit i feel it was as these gentlemen said i agree with them it's a two yeah i mean it's it's light and breezy so yeah like it's tough because we I often, I think a lot of us do, even in any review, we sometimes default to it too. But I think it's perhaps more relevant, like more deserving here. Yeah, it's totally fine. It's an it's an interesting little like quick read, like you said, you get through it in two to five minutes, like whatever. So yeah, it's 
maybe if it was uh, given a bit more room to breathe, if you will, like it might have garnered perhaps like had a chance of getting a three, you will. But I don't. I certainly don't think it's weak or poorly handled or anything like that as well. So yeah, I'll, I'll probably follow suit. It's just like it seems like you almost it has to get a two, like roughly, or unless unless mm-hmm. it was like very very badly received or we did not like it. But it's not that I didn't like it. But I think for something of this nature, as you mentioned, probably two is is about right. I was open to being convinced to give it a three, but no one... I was almost going to, but you guys convinced me to give it a two, so... Yeah. Uh, Yeah. I'm not... I I don't... Yeah. I was going to say I couldn't decide between a two and a three, because on the one hand, it was an enjoyable read, and it definitely had a beginning, but... but, I, I I mean, just because it is so well done, I really it did leave you wanting more. Yeah, for sure. And so, like, yeah, like I said, um, maybe in some other parallel universe we would have, but I think a two is perfectly fine and solid. And so let's move on to. You said you yeah, you had some interesting thoughts on themes, so why don't you uh, do that? So the major conflict in this story is between the father uh, who is a drunk and the mother who is at home while he is not drinking, and I. Maybe reading too much into this, but this is what I gathered from it, mm. with the fact that it's not necessarily the father sleeping on the lawn, but the father is becoming more and more distant from the family because of his alcoholism and is not returning home. Uh, and in a sense, and I think the most important line in this is when he establishes roots in the lawn. He establishes mm. roots outside of the home. Mm. And that's partially, oddly enough, the writer saying that the mother was it's the father's echoes me yes but it's the mother not accept wanting him back mm. pushing him out made the father establish his roots elsewhere hmm, and that could both be viewed as him leaving and yeah. being absent of her life or in a sense him going into the ground and dying but i don't necessarily get the death aspect of it i thought more of the fact of the distance that was built between the daughter and the father as the father was pushed out of the house because of his alcoholism. Mm. And I thought there, like, there's a lot of metaphor going into here with lawn and lawn care and, <laughs> yeah. uh, make sure to keep me trim. Like and it says, make sure to be part of my life, even though she's now moving on, mm. and, uh, better things. It, it's a very tragic tale. Yeah. So it, I'm going to give it a one for that. Okay. It's interesting. It becomes incumbent on the daughter at the end to, you know, keep their relationship good, you know, like when he says, make sure you trim me or whatever. <laughs> I thought that was interesting, an interesting way to to kind of explore that relationship between the two of them. And yeah, you're right. It, it is all metaphor for the relationship, not only between the father and the mother, but between the, the father whole, and the daughter anyway, as well. Um, you don't really get much about her relationship with her mother. You get a lot more about yeah, how she feels about her father and um, where, like, kind of how she is, like, stumbles over him at one point, <laughs> I think, like, because he's just laying in the yard or whatever. Well, he, and, she was, like, sneaking out, like, to see her boyfriend yeah. or whatever. And um, and he, like, gives her a dirty look or whatever <laughs> because she is, you know, back late from hanging out with her boyfriend. But, like, you know, that's kind of all that. It it feels like she's kind of saying, well, you don't have, like, you see this, you see me at these, like, random times, but you don't really have the place to say whether what I'm doing with my boyfriend is right or not, because you're out on the fucking lawn. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, liked, I like the themes in this, actually, and I think I'm going to give it a one. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I, 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 maybe it's a little bit deeper, as you fleshed out, than I, like, originally, the reaction I had reading it, but I certainly think that is there. It's, it's certainly, a, I think, an obvious enough metaphor for that kind of stuff. And, and yeah, <clears throat> I think it was pretty well handled, again, even given the short span of time in which it was given to uh, um, address that. I cannot believe I didn't pick up that theme before because I was like, all right, this is an amusing little romp, you know, blah, blah, blah. I didn't really think about it as much. And now as somebody who has a piece of shit father who basically you leave and then they have this codependency where they want you to pay attention to them. Oh, you know, in, in other words, hmm. it may not be literally feed me, but you know, you here's a guy who wants to take interest in his daughter's life after he's, well, after he's left sort for of whatever strange ish. Yeah. Right? But he's left, and he's he's out there on the on the um, perimeter, and uh, he doesn't do any so, so doesn't do anything to endear himself to bring himself back in the fold. Is this very um, uh, stagnant, and he expects other people to make the decisions for him. 
Um, I mean, there's many things that like I'm now reading into. Um, it's getting a really strong one for me. And now I'm really like, you know, uh, I, yeah, I'm going to stick with the two as far as plot goes. And, but this is definitely like, all oh, right, I'm getting, I got so much more out of this now. And I'm like, versus like the onset. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, not like I didn't enjoy it. I did enjoy it, but I didn't really take it beyond what it was. But mm. Ian, what you said, I'm like sitting here going, holy shit, mm. this is working into, you know, deadbeat dads. This is working into, um, you know, a certain, you know, th- traits with uh, dependency, um, you know, for a very short film or for, for, for a very short story, this packs in a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. All right. So it's ones on themes all around. And actually, Chris, why don't you go on with antagonist? The father. The father's the antagonist. Well, <laughs> Especially no, after what you just said. Yeah, no, no, no. And yeah, that may be my bias. But if you look at it, it's like the mother, we don't know much about the mother. I mean, she sits there and it's like, you know, I married an idiot or whatever she said. And, you know, she's a damn sm- fool. A damn fool. And then sits there and smokes at him from out the window. Um, but but it, it, generally speaking, he has a he has a problem. He went out in the lawn. He doesn't make a move. He's just, he's like just there. Um, he's a literal I, clump of dirt he is by a, the end. He's a literal clump of dirt. Um, but he, but it's weird because he's his own antagonist in a way. I mean, he is an antagonist because his daughter, who this is a first person narrative, you know, seems a little ambivalent and the mother seems very accusatory. Mm. But the father is just so self-pitying. Um, you know, he is, he is his own worst enemy and is sitting there and yeah, I'll give him a one. Cause he's, he's, I'm going to, unless you can, unless somebody could talk me in otherwise, I'm going to call him the antagonist. No, I mean, I think it's fair to say that is the case, or at least it's more of it than versus anything else. And I don't have much more to add. I think you're, you know, I agree with almost everything, all the points you just made about it. And yeah, like as you sort of laid out as well, E, that we can all like maybe see a little bit more deeper in, into it um as a whole the character and the themes you know again versus like the um the initial like quick reading if you will so i will give it a one on that front as well yeah i i uh i agree that i think the father is the antagonist of this it's interesting that the like absentee parent is the one that is focused on and i think that happens Mm -hmm. a lot in not only in stories but like it happens a lot with People at home, you know, like the you kind of gloss over your relationship with somebody who you see every day, and you um, tend to focus more and and be more. Um, I don't know. There's the feeling of loss about hmm. somebody who you wish was better and there all the time, you know. Um, and I think that this, that's done interesting in this story, um, in in terms of the metaphor of him just being out on the lawn, you know. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah. No, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to give him a one. I have nothing to add. One, you gave me a one as well, though. <laughs> just, just wanted to uh, officially check your score. All right, so it'll bring me to protagonist, which is the daughter Luann. And yeah, like again, I, as we talk this more out, and uh, I think about it, and I'm glancing through the story as well, the one page that can consists of. So yeah, even though you don't get much of her, I think you do get what you do get is enough for you to get a feeling, a sense of her, of who she is, and like as she sort of grows up and the relationship between her and her father and her and her mother to a degree as well. And, you know, her brief stint with her boyfriend and the little line and so about that. Yeah, I think, like, it's it's enough to... I, I don't think it's weak, but again, like, that's why I said this was an interesting experiment to a degree because the story has to cover, like, all this ground, or at least the grounds that we uh, have laid out in our questions in such a brief time. But I do think there's enough there, and you get a sense of her, like I said, a- and how she's maturing, how she's growing up, and how you, how she views her changing relationship and now, assumingly, how she's going to live her life afterwards. Mm. So I think I think it's pretty solid. It's also really important to assess the story that the character has chosen to tell mm. and the way she has mm. chosen to tell it, which speaks volumes That's, to her character yeah. as well. I like that, yeah. So I'm probably leaning on a one. Okay. Yeah, I think that's interesting that she kind of divorces herself from the reality of what's happening in her family or some weird shit's going on, one or the other. <laughs> but, uh, you know, like, I, I think or you're both. right. I, I think it is like this this um, this character really choosing to see the world in metaphor rather than the way it actually is. Mm. 
And I think that's kind of a cool aspect of the character. You don't, like you said, you don't know a ton about her other than the ways that she relate. Like, really, what you know about her is the way that she relates to her father. Yeah, I mean, she's, she's stuck on a pack of crackers and stuff like that. Yeah, like, and like... Which you also know, you can read as a, some sort of metaphor to a degree. The, her her boyfriend tried to reach his hand up her shirt and... Uh, and got, actually does. And then... Got a disapproving look <laughs> from her father when she came back in. Like, um, and she crossed his path or whatever. But yeah, yeah. I, I think that that's... Uh, I like the character... I think that there's enough there to give it a one, and yeah, I yeah, think I th- that's it. I, yeah. I think my final thought is that there's more. There's more there than there isn't that it garners a, a solid yeah. one. I'm giving her. One, I'm giving her one for everything you guys say. Plus, I think she has the healthiest approach. <laughs> if so, if somebody's gonna be there a lunk, then she's gonna treat him like a lunk. Yeah. That's fine. Fair I enough, think she's yeah. a very healthy psyche. So. I like that analysis as well. All right. Well, then, Steve-O, why don't you tell us about these secondary characters? All right. Which I guess leaves only it's one. the mom, I guess. Two. No, there's two. Yeah. And the boyfriend, I guess. Yeah. Um, Mr. Handy. Neither one. Mr. Handy. <laughs> Jimmy or whatever. Neither one of them are very Jimmy well Jackson. developed. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm probably leaning. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> All right. I'm probably leaning towards a, a uh, zero on this one. I, I don't think yeah. there's enough there for either one of these characters to really give them a one. I think that. Of the two, obviously, the mom could have been developed more, but I don't think that would have really told the story that um, Lincoln, the author of this, wanted to tell. So I think that it's going to be a zero, but because there wasn't room in this story mm. for anybody else other than these two. Yeah, you know? I almost 100% agree. That's <clears throat> basically sort of my thoughts rephrase that it's just sort of defaultly a zero for the most part. Like, yeah, you could. I thought one of you might make an argument for the mom, and maybe you still will do that, but I don't think... I would be convinced because it's just like they're ancillary characters. Like they're, they're like the window dressing upon like that set aside from like the the main concern, the main dynamic of the relationship. Mm. So yeah, so Jimmy Jackson's there and he cops a feel and dad disapproves. <laughs> and like that's pretty much his con- contribution there. But yeah, like secondary, just again the nature of a story of a, you know a work like this. Right. I have nothing to add. A zero. Man, zero. <laughs> just just add your score. Zero. Yep. That's it. Yeah, I think we were all consensus on that one. All right, then. E, you can add something to dialogue. I I don't know how to judge this. No. This is a difficult one, I agree. It's, I forgot there was dialogue in this until I looked at <laughs> it. There's not at much of it. Your cell phone, Steve-O, where you had the yeah. uh, <laughs> story pulled up, and I realized, oh, yeah, there is. Uh, I do like the mournful, uh, remember to give me a trim mm. or something uh, like that. Promise me you will keep me nice and trim, yeah. is what he says at the end. Yeah. Which is, considering the themes, a very tragic st- uh, statement on on the father's behalf. So, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to just lean towards a really soft one. But you guys could switch me over if you make a good point. Yeah, I'm Tony the way. So the line I thought was the best is actually early on, or again, early in relative to the <laughs> story, is where he says to his daughter, love eats away at you like a colony of termites. Like, that's not a, that's a pretty good line. Like, I kind of like it. However, the issue I'm having is like the other stuff, even the line at the end, what at least to me, wasn't as impactful. Like, yeah, it's fine. It makes sense and it fits in there. But like, otherwise, it's, there's only like, I'm, count, I'm trying to count them now. One, two, three, four. Five, six lines of six actual like lines that are in quotes, which you know, spoken yeah. words. So like I'm sort of I can coin flip this one pretty much as well. So I might hold off to see what the you you guys have to say. The other two of you. I, I mean, are we? Uh, is there precedent for a first person narrative like in terms of dialogue? I mean, Does there isn't. Isn't we, we sine waved about it? I, I mean, I know it's past. probably conditional. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what I was going to say to you. Because I mean, if we do. If we if and I mean because I'm I'm falling on the side of the end because I, I I can give it a softer one, but the last line, which if we consider it, I would definitely give it a stronger one. It's I didn't think he could hear me anymore, you know, because after he says keep me trim, sure, and she said I didn't think Eric could make, hear me anymore, and I said it would, and then the next thing is like I mow lawns all around the neighborhood now. I have a shiny new lawnmower, and it's just like not about him. It's about trimming the lawn. It's beyond him. Yeah, I get it, and that says so much. But that to me might be more style than pure dialogue, right? Yeah. I know it's a little bit tricky. And theme, yeah, yeah, and exactly. Theme. Yeah, I think that's an interesting and uh, the line of dialogue. I'm actually 
probably going to give this a one because I'm noticing things now about this that I didn't notice the first time. The line mm-hmm. before the termite line that you mentioned is her mom saying he can rot out there for all I care, which is like a great like lead into that. I sure. Think. Like, yeah. Um, juxtaposition. And then at the end, as you were mentioning, Chris, um, when he says, oh, when, when she says, I didn't think he would hear me anymore, but I said I would. And then, uh, you know, as you, as you mentioned, she goes into that. There's, there's that whole, like, theme of her father, her relationship with her father, even after he's not paying attention to her, is still shaping her life by, she becomes, like, she, be, she mows all the lawns in the neighborhood. And, like, she creates these um, relationships with people all around the neighborhood because of the way that he, he, the two of them left things. And yeah, granted that's probably not dialogue that part, but I think the termites line is pretty good. So like for the little bit of dialogue there is, it's I think it's pretty solid enough. and I'll probably give it a soft one. But well. and you made me think of something. I'm definitely giving it a one because without what little dialogue there is there, we wouldn't have any point of view from the father and therefore, there would be that's a fair point as well. There would be really good. no way to and to the selfishness of the father there, and the yeah. selfishness of the father, the blatant narcissism of the father. You might have convinced me there at the end because I had written down z- uh, zero for dialogue, like going into it. But yeah, you guys make actually pretty good points, and for what is there, and yeah, I do like the term line. Like I said, that's the one that was the best to me. But everything else you said sort of fills it out. It's just just enough. It's not the strongest of ones ever, but I think it does garner. Uh, it earned it now at this point. So, uh, good job. Good job, fellas. Mm. I'll switch to a one. And that'll bring us to style. Speaking of sort of sort of related, uh, Chris. Um, I, I think I may have touched on it before. Yeah. Um, I do like the style a lot. The first person narrative does say a lot. I like I, I like her dad. I like I like the fact that her mom is directing her anger towards her dad and her dad is directing his pity towards himself and his and, and the daughter is just kind of going through it and it's yeah. just interesting to see from this first person narrative that she is kind of not blind to who her father is it's kind of i don't want to say she starts completely ambivalent but you could see her go there in a very short time sure. i'm definitely going to give it a one i i, I okay. did very much enjoy this and i thought uh, her narrative was was really effective that's what i'm looking for yeah, it is interesting. Like all everything is focused on the father in this, and granted, he's the you know title character, the lawnmower dad, but um, or lawn dad that is. Uh, but both work. I think that the kind of surreality of this story is a really nice way to mm. introduce the the metaphors that they're that uh, you know it's trying to go for, and I like the style of this a lot, and. You know, in as much as it's a really short story, there's not much room for it to be (laughs) for me to like criticize it. I guess. Sure, sure. So it's either good or it's not. You know, it's a one or a zero on this one, and I'm gonna give it a one. Yeah, I mean, I get you. Like, it's it's a very not clipped, but it's short to the point. A lot like sort of like um, almost a microcosm of the story itself, and there's totally nothing wrong with it. And yeah, like we just mentioned the the lines of dialogue that felt were quality. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I I do like the point where. Because it has a sort of, I don't know how to say this, like, mini sense of surreality. It's not, like, the most surreal thing in the world, but there's just enough there that it adds, like, a little, a sort of dream-like quality. A sort of, like, a fable-like quality, yeah. like you, you mentioned. And I think that that works very efficiently uh, within it. And, yeah, I think it's probably style is, like, the, a stronger, if not the strongest point for me uh, of this story. So, I'll give it a one. It works really well as a fable. It's good on the surface. Uh, both of you, uh, Scott and uh, Chris... You mentioned that on the surface level you enjoyed it before dumping the which is what a good fable does. It it, it has many layers yeah. to it underneath, uh, talking about how events in life and how to deal with them. And I think this does have a, a, a lot of layers to it. So I'm going to give it... Yeah, all right. Very nice. So that's ones all around, and it'll bring me to recommendations. So as I mentioned on the uh, beginning, like technically I did, but not because I was familiar with it, just because of the one that randomly chose from a list of modern stuff and yeah like again perhaps now like to n- not to its credit but because it's so short like you might as well read it like i guess i know that sounds like a back in the comment or something but it is worth it for the five minutes that it takes to do that i would say and yeah and like as we just all talked out perhaps it's it's you can get some deeper stuff out of it than it, it would seem like to imply like just uh you know um uh, 
a one a once and a, a, a breezy read through, yeah, if you will. So yeah, I'll certainly recommend it. I'll, I would say yeah, check check it out, give it a chance. We'll probably put up a link to it, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's abs- on a quick break and uh, go through it. You know, yeah, it's absolutely like a quick punch of a story, and mm. it's it's good, and it's just uh, these. Stories that are really short are going to be so much easier to recommend because if I had an yeah. enjoyable three minutes or yeah, like four I minutes said, like, reading yeah, it, you then, might as well kind of. Yeah, I can't. You know, it's if if you're looking for something to read in, uh, you know, while you're on the toilet or something, this is <laughs> this isn't a bad a one. ringing endorsement. You, actually, this comes this comes with both story. This comes with two stories, so yeah, you can read true. both. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll recommend it. See, I want to recommend it. Tomorrow I'm going to forget I read it. <laughs> Which I don't know how to handle that. Because it is good. If someone came up to me and said, should I read this 500 word story of Man? <laughs> like, why are you asking me if you should just read it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you could have read it by now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the time it took for you to ask me that. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. It's, it's, uh, uh, overall, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. No, it's right. worth a read. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the best thing you can say about it. Like, I know again, it's difficult to cut up such a thing of this nature, but yeah, it's so it's worth it. So I think that would mean you would give it a one. What do you think, Chris? Yeah, uh, I think it's worth a read. I enjoyed it, but now that we've discussed the themes and taken it apart as now a getting table, depressed. and oh, I'm not getting depressed. <laughs> I'm sitting here he's getting lunch. angry. I could sit here and go on about I want you to get fathers. Mad. Uh, no, I mean, there's a <laughs> lot. What's in there is a, in a very short amount of time a little space yeah uh he says a lot and uh no i i enjoyed it It was a it was a very good read and i've got a bunch of friends with narcissistic parents who i'm going to recommend it to (laughs) force them to read it yeah not even force them i'm like hey force them to bury their parents in the front yard (laughs) yeah (laughs) well good luck with all that however (laughs) that will bring us to the final scores and interestingly enough we've all given it eights for the same reasons although i was convinced of one that i was going to give a zero so yeah that's an eight overall Mm -hmm. pretty strong for again such a again surfacely brief and seemingly like again uh i don't know what word i want like seemingly like not that deep work but is yeah sure so, yeah. sure deeper than you know you than one might expect, expect at expect. first yeah, glance exactly yeah. i mean and and not so many words he said a lot more i think that's yeah. what you guys and are sometimes saying less yeah. is more effective yeah. for sure and i think this is one of ones that falls into that category so yeah check it out like i said we'll put up link to it and I think that'll do it for Lawn Dad. Anyone on final thoughts about it? No. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to go mow my own Lawn Dad right now. I have been Scott Thurlow. <laughs> I've been here with Stephen Amosi. I just got a trim and I feel great. Mm-hmm. Jonathan Ian Manzer. Have a good night. And Chris Morgan. Night. And we'll see you next time. Editing and engineering by Christopher Morgan. Music by Christopher Morgan. Check us out on YouTube and iTunes for the shows and on Facebook and Twitter for updates.